Good morning. It is filled to the brim and it is Tuesday, September 14th. And I'm going to talk about grace that abounds. And it's going to be a two-part thing today and tomorrow. Grace that abounds. Now we are people, products of grace. I mean, his grace is extended to us because of his love, because of God's agape love. And so we are products of his grace and therefore grace has abounded to us and should abound from us. And some of the greatest challenges is when we have a hard time with being gracious to other people. But it's so important for us to understand the grace of God toward us and that will help us to be graceful, gracious people to others. See, grace is a product of God's agape love. And grace means the free and unmerited favor of God as manifested in his salvation and his bestowal of blessing. Free, we did not earn it. Unmerited, we did not deserve it. So we did not earn it and we did not deserve it. There was nothing intrinsically within us that deserved God's grace, but he gave it to us anyway because of his unconditional love for us. For God so loved the world. And God still has that outpouring of his unconditional love towards us. So we are people of his grace. And, and it's a beautiful thing. You know, sin came into the world through man's disobedience. And righteousness came to us and redemption came to us and salvation came to us through Christ's obedience. Romans 5, 19 and 20. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So it was through Adam and Eve's disobedience that we became sinners. And through Christ's obedience, we became righteous. And it was freely given to us. His righteousness is freely given to us. You know, in the scripture, it says that the law of God revealed our sin. It didn't necessarily produce it. It revealed it. It came as a contrast to our sin, to reveal the sin that humanity had in their lives. That contrast and that revelation of sin. You know, so many times, even as we are growing in Christ, the, Lord, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, brings to us a revelation of maybe an area of our life where the Holy Spirit wants to come in and cleanse and free us from. It's so important for us to continue to allow and to receive the grace of God in our lives as we are becoming more and more like Christ Jesus. Now this is what's really powerful. We are saved by His grace and we are seated by His grace. Let me just explain this a little bit. Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So many times... We quote the scripture, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And that is a powerful positioning. And it's true. But we receive that positioning of power and authority with Christ in heavenly places through his grace. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are seated by the outpouring of his grace. 
And we need to remember that, that we are saved by His grace, but we are seated as a result of His grace. And it is never any of our own righteousness, but it is always His righteousness in us. This keeps us in the right spiritual mentality that we, everything that we have received from Christ, the power and authority, is not by our works. Now, I just went through a series that talked about positioning ourselves. And we don't want to misconstrue that we do something in the sense of earning it because we are positioned by grace. However, we have to beware of sin getting in the way. We have to beware of disobedience. Remember the scripture that I first read, it was through Adam's disobedience that sin came into the world and through Christ's obedience that righteousness came into the world, that we were made right. And therefore that's what that positioning is about, positioning ourselves, that we do not step into disobedience or into uh, a lack of submission to Christ or a disrespect for his work. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about disrespecting the grace of Jesus Christ and his work because that's a dangerous place for people to go after they've received, after they've, they've welcomed Christ in their lives and then they begin to stomp on that grace. We're going to go there tomorrow. But it's so important that we recognize that we are saved by his grace, but we are seated with Christ in heavenly places by his grace. And we are God's example to the universe of his precious grace that has come to us through his agape love. As a result, as a result, we are people of grace. This is one of the greatest challenges for Christians, all of us, that we are people who pour out grace to other people around us. Not only do we receive his grace, his unmerited favor, grace that we did not earn, grace that we did not deserve, now we pour it out to others. So many times we fall into the trap of having other people earn the grace that we are to bestow. In other words, if they act a certain way, or if they say a certain thing, or whatever, our enemies, whatever you want to say, then we'll be gracious. But that's not how it works according to scripture. And that's not what we received. Before we, while we were still yet sinners, he poured out his grace towards us while we were yet sinners. And in the same way, we are followers of Christ and we model his behavior. We can't do it in ourselves. That's why he has given us the Holy Spirit. And that's why he didn't just save us, but he positioned us. We are saved and we are seated by his grace. And that place, that seated with him in heavenly places, gives us the ability to pour out his grace, just like he did and does towards us. And as scripture says, you know, where sin abounds, so much more grace abounds. Where sin abounds, so much more grace abounds. The fact is this, God's grace is unlimited, unlimited, and that's the beauty. And that's not a weakness of God. That's strength. That's his power, the power of his grace. I want you to pray about this word. The Lord has grace that abounds, and he wants us to have the revelation of the grace that abounds in our lives daily, as well as the grace that should abound from our lives to people around us so that the world may know about God's love, about his grace toward them. Pray about this word. God bless you. I love you.